Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Abdul Jarrar. Hey, Abdul, how are you? Hey, man. Good morning. Good to be on the show. It's Good great to, to talk with you. Now, Abdul's got a great job. He is the general manager and vice president of U.S. Enterprise Sales for the Intel Corporation. I mean, if you don't know what Intel is, probably you're one of the few people that don't know really much about the company. But Intel is a publicly listed business. It's an industry leader creating world-changing technology that enables global progress and enriches lives. It's inspired by the famous Moore's Law, and it continuously works to advance the design and manufacturing of semiconductors to help address customers' greatest challenges. And we'll talk about all of the exciting innovations and things that Intel is pushing forward on in a second. But before we get there, Abdul, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, thanks, man. And, and we should note that Intel is the company that puts silicon in Silicon Valley. So as we like there to say. There you go. <laughs> um, hey, listen, you know, I, I've had an interesting career journey. You know, I, I actually come from very, very humble beginnings. I, I grew up a family of six siblings. We all shared one room uh, in, a, in a, you know, growing up. And, um, you know, we lived day to day, literally. Uh, it was survival mode almost every day. And for me to reflect back on where I have landed in my career is just, I count my blessings every day. And I think, uh, I, I'm, you know, how, how, how did it happen? So I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it, you know, in, in, um, in er my early days of college, as I came to the U.S. to study computer engineering, the Gulf War happened. My family then, um, uh, happened to live in Kuwait. They were on uh, kind of the receiving end of that war. Mm. And suddenly overnight, I essentially lost my support, um, financial support and you know, family support that I had going into college. So I immediately went into uh, what I grew up with, which is survival mode and, and really got into, uh, I ended up getting three jobs to get through college. And when I, um, you know, when I started my career, I started in a small company in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Never have I imagined that I would actually be working for a giant like Intel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, till today I pinch myself, but, you know, the reality is if you, you know, the lessons I learned is if you work hard, you operate with the highest levels of integrity and you constantly learn and improve, um, you know, the, the, the American dream can happen. And uh, so, you know, I joined Intel in 97 as a software engineer uh, and, and over the years have, have taken my career into uh, uh, various leadership roles in product management and, and working with different partners. And now I, I lead a large sales organization for the company. And, and really it's, uh, it's been just an incredible uh, journey. And one of the highlights of my career is, is having worked with the uh, former chairman and CEO of the company, Craig Barrett. Who was uh, uh, who led the company for several years and uh, uh, during its you know uh, high growth area uh, uh, high growth uh, time and I was his chief of staff. Oh, so wow. again, thinking about my humble beginnings and and the things I've done, it's been an incredible uh, journey for me career wise. Yeah, well, you brought back uh, a lot of memories. You know, Abdul, we are the same generation, so. I remember being in college when that war broke out and it was, it was interesting, you know, yeah. it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, everything changes, but some things stay the same, right? <laughs> you know, we're still, yeah, yeah. we're still, it's life changing, you know, it's life changing because for me, it, it really got me to, it, it shaped my character, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it, I was forced to do things that I wasn't planning on doing at that young age at that time. Right. And, Working three jobs and to get through college is not is not easy. Yeah. So it really shapes your character, shapes who you are, and kind of those things stay with you uh, till today. Yeah. And and uh, you know one other thing I'll just mention uh, a little fun fun fact is I've been to fifty five countries mostly for work, uh, traveled for work, which has been amazing as well. Uh, you know, and 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 some of it for leisure. 
but when you travel to so many places and I, you know, I've worked in Asia, I've worked in the Middle East, I've worked in Europe and the US, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the kind of the, that exposure to the different cultures in the world just really yeah. leaves a mark with you as well. So. so, I mean, Abdul, I know how important your role is. Certainly everything is about the large enterprise accounts when you're in business and certainly a business like Intel, that those types of relationships really matter and shape a company. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about what you're working on right now. Yeah, listen, every you, you kind of mentioned it in the opening. Um, Intel is at the heart of um, creating world changing technology. We've been there in the, from the beginning and we continue to really look at how we can continue to develop technologies that help solve our customers' problems. And, you know, when you look at the unparalleled reach that Intel has, we really touch almost every human and, and every company on the planet. If you look across uh, your devices, the, the cloud, the connectivity, right? Um, mm -hmm. We're essentially empowering and accelerating digital transformation edge to cloud. And, you know, looking at everything, not, you know, looking at it, but, but essentially empowering, powering and, and, and making it uh, tick. Mm -hmm. Everything from AI to 5G to autonomous driving or autonomous mobility in general, uh, fintech and and the industrial uh, modernization, right? What's you know ref referred to as Industry 4.0. So you know, with with Pat's leadership at Intel, it's been truly inspiring to kind of you know the the going back to the roots of the company as an innovation company, as a company that led so many technological advancements. And, and really being, being at the bleeding edge of all of these technologies that I just listed that are essentially impacting uh, our lives. I mean, eventually you're gonna get your um, DoorDash delivery uh, at your door delivered to you in an autonomous robot. And that autonomous robot is powered by Intel's technology. Uh, and before and, you um, even know you want need it, <laughs> uh, which is what I need. I need a robot that literally lands at my door saying, we knew you were hungry. Here's your burrito. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I'd like a robot that does the dishes and mobs and cleans the house. That would be Well, good. that was what was <laughs> promised. I mean, that's what the Jetsons offered us, but I, you know, I haven't seen that yet. So, so, you know, essentially enterprises are, are rather traveling with this technological these technological advancements every day and you know I'm I'm just I love being at the at the center of that and you know we we we'll talk some more about it I know but like being a, a the trusted advisor for so many companies around the world where they look to Intel to understand what's coming what's happening and how can they apply these technologies to benefit their businesses right. um, is really thrilling yeah, and you've touched on a lot of the major trends that we've seen over the years. When you go out there and you're talking with these customers, what's top of mind for them? What are the key hot button things that they're focused on right now? Yeah, you have to remember many of the enterprises have existed for tens of years and yeah. maybe some of them even hundreds. So they have tremendous amount of business that, that was built on legacy technology and, and older generation platforms. So mm -hmm. the num I would say the number one, um, you know, discussion that happens is how do, you know, how do they modernize their businesses mm -hmm. so they can stay competitive, not, not get disrupted and, and continue to grow, right? So ultimately it's all about growth and, and, and building and modernizing the the, the business, yeah. and it's many of them are. Uh, this is this is a huge challenge because again there is a lot of legacy. So you have to kind of balance investing for the future while you know maintaining and sustaining uh, your existing uh, businesses. But there mm -hmm. are of course other things that a lot of companies also are dealing with, including their you know security right security is becoming huge issue for many many companies as they modernize yeah. uh, they're also you know looking at what is their data strategy you know a lot of businesses now rely on data that they're you know collecting or getting from different sources how do they manage that data how do they put it to best use in terms of you know analytics 
and and you know to benefit their their businesses. And right. then, you know, the reality of, of our new world is we all kind of live in a co-op competition. Mm -hmm. You know, you're collaborating with some some of you know your, your partners, and but you're also competing. So there's that interesting dynamic. Uh, and then you you know, supply chain has been obviously another big part of the uh recently, you know, in the last well, I was of gonna ask you more about that, certainly yeah. in the context of everything that we saw in over the last couple of years. And it's certainly been an interesting time for you. I noticed that you moved into the general manager role in May of last year. And uh, that still was very much in the heart of the pandemic, filled with lovely discussions about supply chain shortages, et cetera. Tell me a little bit about your experience during that, yeah, and it, that and moment. It continues. It continues. It hasn't, it hasn't ended yet, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it was a very, very unique experience that I lived through. And, and I would say it, it, it took a while to, for me to really um, get in the groove of things. And, and it's, it's, you know, when you're, when, you know, first of all, I, I you know, my, my organization calls on the Fortune 1000 companies in the U.S., right? So we're talking about some of the largest brands and largest companies, corporations in the country. And many of them are grappling with all the things we just highlighted. For me, it was a kind of a twofold challenge because in the middle of the pandemic, I took on a new organization. So there was a ton of, you know, interesting dynamic of, of getting to know people, learning the organization, showing up the way I'm actually in real life. Because, you know, being uh, behind the camera, people kind of could be perceived differently than when you're in real life. And then uh, and then the other, the, the external piece of it is working with customers that are also getting to know me for me. Uh, I'm getting to know them. And, and not being able to actually visit them in person and meet with them in person. I mean, you know- You know, I, I never thought about say, that. Like, what an interesting challenge, because when you take over a big role, like the one that you have, certainly the, the first thing that most people would have done pre-pandemic was get on a plane. Get on and a plane. Go, yeah. Yes. Go right. have as many meetings in person, as many dinners, because, you know, you build such amazing relationships you know, over dinner than you could do over hours of video conferencing, right? You, you know, you get to know each other, you talk about your families or what you do for fun. So you absolutely, that would have been what I would do. So we're kind of getting there now, but it's been, I, I have to say, it's been a little more painful having to do that in the middle of the pandemic and doing it over, you know, video conferencing as opposed to being able to get on the plane and be with my customers and yeah. my team in person in real life. Yeah, well, uh, you know, things are evolving. So hopefully, hopefully you will get more of that FaceTime. Although I don't yeah. really envy anyone that has to travel a lot since I know how painful that is. <laughs> yes. uh, but as you look forward into the back part of this year and into 2023, what do we have on the docket and what does it look like for you guys? Yeah, so uh, I think some of the most recent uh, things that are we're really excited about, uh, I'll name a few. One is the, the build out of, of, of semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. I think, you know, for many, may have, some may have followed the latest news, the groundbreaking in Ohio. That's just amazing. That's going to be one of the largest ever built semiconductor complexes or, or sites in the world. Uh, we're looking at, you know, initial phase of 20 billion and, and potentially going up to 80 or 100 billion dollars of investment. Mm -hmm. and, and the strategy behind that is to really rebalance the supply chain around the world because today we're heavily reliant on Asia. The second piece is, you know, AI is becoming this an absolute, um, I mean, AI is obviously still in, we think it's still in the infancy stages. There is so much that AI will play a role in terms of applications um, in, in so many industries. Think about healthcare, retail, oil and gas industry, you name it, AI is going to be in it. And, and you know, Intel is at the heart of building out um, capabilities that are going to enable uh, just numerous AI applications across the board. And then I would say the next, the next thing that's really exciting is, is uh, 5G and beyond, right? 5G connectivity is just rolling out. Uh, again, Intel is at the heart of 5G technology. And the fact that 5G is going to enable you know, the equivalent of, uh, you know, Wi-Fi speeds that you get at home, but you're, you're going to get it everywhere, 
right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're in an autonomous car, it's constantly connected. Uh, imagine all the entertainment your kids and, and yourself can enjoy in a car while you're not driving it and you're just, you know, streaming some videos uh, from Netflix. So <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy that you raised the new factory in Ohio. I think that there was a lot of discussion in the early part of the pandemic about kind of a rebalancing of the supply chain, restructuring, and thinking about what that would mean going forward. And this plant is really probably the finest example of it that we have. So yeah. that's a very, very exciting project that you guys are moving forward. And certainly 5G, anybody who has kids, keep their kids occupied in those cars, <laughs> but also so obviously just the connectivity for how we have anything from autonomous vehicles to more and more data hungry solutions. We're going to obviously need more and more advancement. So this has been an amazing discussion, Abdul. Thank you so much for being on Uncage. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and your team are working on, where's the best place to get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I think, uh, starting with the Intel landing page, right? And then I'm happy to be reached directly on LinkedIn. Um, so that, that would be the best path to, to contact me. And then we will, of course, route it to the right people. But yeah, it's been a pleasure joining you, Vent, as well. And thanks for the, uh, for the time and opportunity. Absolutely. Well, we've been speaking with Abdul Jarrar. He is the general manager, vice president of U.S. enterprise sales at Intel Corporation, which is an industry leader creating world changing technology that enables global progress and enriches lives. I think I like Abdul's tagline of we put the silicon into Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> the company is famous, obviously, for being inspired by Moore's Law, and they continuously work to advance the design and manufacturing of semiconductors that are truly shaping almost every area of our lives and certainly the balance of global business and business structures in terms of the scale and the technology that we need to move at this rapid pace that we seem to be trying to, to maintain. Abdul, thank you so much for being on Uncaged Day and we look forward to having you back. My pleasure. Thanks, Ben. Cheers.